Hey everyone, welcome back to the Syntax Byte. My name is Ryan and in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to use the Open Route Service Optimization API to do vehicle route optimization in Python. So Open Route Service is a great directions and mapping API, uh, although it doesn't exactly do mapping, uh, but it, it allows you to see places and such and interact with OpenStreet uh, map in, in that sort of a way. And I've covered it uh, in a couple of previous videos on my channel. Today, we're gonna look at the optimization aspect of the API. Um, so let's just jump right into it. Um, I'm going to start off here with, with uh, some code and I'm, I'm actually gonna copy and paste this. I will go over the code. Um, so this is just, uh, just outlining the coordinates that we're gonna use today, as well as using Folium to map them. Um, the focus of this video is on open route service, not Folium, hence why uh, rather than just writing out this code, I'm just going to give you a brief overview of it, and then we can write some open route service code. Folium is just going to help us visualize what the open route service is actually doing um, so that we can actually see visually the routings that we're getting back. Um, so to start here, I've just imported Folium. We have some chords. Uh, these are in longitude latitude format. That is the open route service format. Um, so that means we can plug these directly into open route service. However, when we go to use the Folium map, when we give it the, the location, we actually need to reverse them because Folium uses latitude longitude and then reversed is not already a list. So we have to, we have to cast that to a list. Um, so I'm go, gonna go ahead and just run this. This just runs through the chords and, and throws them as little dots on the map here. You can see I've pre-selected some coordinates uh, for us to work with today in Oak Park. Oak Park is a suburb of Chicago. I've never been to Chicago, but uh, maybe one day I'll be there and I just kind of picked a city at random and threw some, threw some coordinates on the map to just uh, allow us to have something to work with here. So if you've seen my previous video on the directions API, definitely go ahead and take a look at that if you haven't. Um, one of the ways that you can optimize routing in open route service for a single vehicle on a single route um, you know, very, very simple, like sort of traveling salesman thing is just to pass the optimize waypoints parameter to the directions function. As I've already covered the directions function in my previous video, I'm not going to cover that today. But uh, if you watch that video, just ensure that you're passing optimize waypoints equals true, and it will naturally optimize the waypoints uh, for your specific route. So to get started here, we're gonna start with a simple two vehicle example where um, each job is sort of uh, of the same length um, and the vehicles can do a maximum of five jobs in the day. So we've got two vehicles, both of them are cars. You do not have to make both of your vehicles cars. You can actually take advantage of open route services uh, abilities to route more than just cars. You can route bikes, you can route, route people walking, uh, but we're gonna do both cars um, and then we can do um, see what sort of the split is here, here between the routes. So it'll give us a back of route and we'll be able to see, you know, which points on the map are hit, uh, by each vehicle. So to get started here, I'm going to open, uh, import open route service as ORS. And then I'm going to go ahead and say that client is equal to ORS.client. And I'm going to pass in a API key. And of course, I will disable this API key after the video, but if you want to try it, go ahead. Um, so once we have that, we of course need our coordinates. I'm just going to copy our coordinates from above here. And we can go ahead and put those coordinates on the map once again. So we'll copy this code here. Loops through the coordinates, creates a marker for each of the coordinates. All right. And so the first thing that we have to create is the vehicles that we're going to be uh, optimizing. So we can have as many vehicles as we want. We can start them wherever we want. I am going to go ahead and actually have a standard vehicle start location. So I'm going to add that in here. And we're imagining this as our headquarters. Um, and that's where all our vehicles are going to start. And so once we have our vehicle start in there, I'm also going to create a marker for that. Um, and it's gonna be in red. And so we can go ahead and see what our map looks like. We can see that we have our 
uh, vehicle start point down here in red and then we have all of the job sites that we're gonna have to go to all right so to start I'm going to create an array of vehicles which we can pass to the optimization And so something important to know about the Open Route Service Optimization API is that it's actually based on something called Vroom. And I'll leave a description to Vroom down in the description, but the API is based on Vroom. Now I will note that if we look at, uh, for example, the jobs here, it says the amount, uh, it's crossed out. I assume that means it's deprecated. And then you can see that under vehicles, we have something called max tasks. Um, this max tasks feature was not implemented in open route service Pi at the, at the time that I'm making this video, it may be in the future, but just be aware that the open route service Pi API could lag behind this, uh, this Vroom documentation, uh, unfortunately. Um, so that is just one thing to be aware of instead, uh, of doing that to restrict the amount of jobs that vehicles are able to do, we can specify an amount on the job and then specify a capacity on the vehicle um, rather than using the max tasks uh, function but just something to be aware of anyway I, I will leave this uh, this down in in the description um, it describes vehicles as well as some of the other things here we're going to be using vehicles and jobs today we're not going to focus on on shipments so to get started we need to do an ors .optimization vehicle and that's going to be ID equal to zero profile equals driving car. And we're going to do start is equal to vehicle start. And I'm going to have it come back and end at the vehicle start as well. And I'm going to give it a capacity of five. So it could do five jobs. Okay. Um, so we've got eight jobs. I'm going to let each vehicle do five. So that way, if it's more efficient to send one vehicle to three jobs and one vehicle to five, we, we can go ahead and do that. And I'm going to create a second one here. We can actually just copy this because it's going to be the exact same. Save the ID. Awesome. So those are our vehicles. You can add as many as you want. You can play around with having these be different profiles if you wanted. Next, we need to create our jobs. So our jobs, we're going to use list comprehension here and build this off of the coordinate list that we had above. So it's an ORS optimization dot job with an ID equal to, I'm gonna use the index from the array. Location is equal to the chords from the array. And then amount is one. So like amount is gonna go against your capacity. So you could have an amount of two for a given job and then it would basically require, you know, twice the time. It would take up two of the capacity here. Um, however, we are gonna uh, discuss after this example how to actually use timings instead um, so if you're just trying to make sure that uh, jobs are taking up capacity, you put amount equals one. If you omit the amount, it'll usually just send a vehicle to um, all the job sites because the jobs don't actually take up any of the capacity. Um, so that's where that max tasks would come in, but that's not implemented yet uh, under this API. Um, although I imagine it would be coming in the near future. So that's everything we need to pass to the job. Then we can do for index chords and enumerate chords and then end our list comprehension there. And so then we can say optimized is equal to client dot optimization and jobs is equal to jobs. Vehicles is equal to vehicles. And we're going to pass geometry equal to true. And that's just going to make sure that we get back actually um, basically the, the physical routing that, that we can map out. So at this point, um, I'm going to add in some mapping code again. Um, so line colors, I want each, um, vehicle to be able to have a different line, uh, color. And then, so we, we're going to basically essentially loop, uh, the routes. So we're going to optimize is going to pass back a dictionary. That dictionary is going to have a member called routes. And for each of those routes, we're going to create a polyline, um, which is a line on the map. Um, so again, we have to reverse the chords because this is going to be working in open route service coordinates. We need it in, in a folium coordinates. And then we do uh, a decode polyline. Essentially, if you watch my previous vi video, I said to use uh, the GeoJSON format and request the GeoJSON format. Um, 
this doesn't come back in GeoJSON format, so one of the ways to get around that and actually get the coordinates out of the line, you have to do a decode polyline. And then, you know, the route, uh, the vehicle, so it'll, it'll give you the ID associated with that route, and then each, each um, piece is, is usually a, a step. Um, but the coordinates overall will show you the entire route. Um, so you'd search for the geometry and then the coordinates and that will give you the entire route rather than having to loop through like every step and stuff. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and add that onto the map. And so if we go ahead and run this here, uh, we could see that we have uh, what looks like one vehicle actually doing the whole route. So let's see what, what went wrong there. All right, so it was actually not two, not one vehicle. Uh, it's just that I forgot to change the ID here when we did a little copy paste. So a typical copy paste problem, we can go ahead and do that. And we can see that pretty naturally, I mean, it's pretty natural split on this when you think of doing it, you know, for, for yourself, if you were just to mentally do this, uh, it's taken the four up here and put them on one vehicle and the four down here and put them on another vehicle pretty natural uh, routing split in this in this particular scenario. Okay, so we've been using so far basic capacity uh, and amount, but what if we actually wanted to add timings into the vehicles? And this will allow us to add additional complexity like adding in lunch breaks or situations where maybe a delivery can only be made during a certain time. Uh, so when you wanna get a little bit more complex with these things and you have a few more restrictions, there is a way to do that uh, using this API. So to get started, I'm gonna do this in sort of a new cell here. Um, we're just gonna copy this part of that cell and paste it in the new cell. And we need to get uh, a little bit more complex with this. So what we're gonna be filling out here is on our vehicles, we're gonna have an actual time window, which is going to describe the working hours. And then on each of our jobs, we are going to have a service, which is going to be a service duration. We could also add time windows for the jobs, which uh, is valid slots for the job service uh, start. And then as well, we could add, uh, you know, breaks in for our vehicles. That being said, to keep things simple, I, I think those are things that uh, definitely if you need them, you can go ahead and add in. I don't want to make the video too long, but I do want to, you know, cover this um, in, in an example here. So we'll just do uh, some basic time windows. Now you'll notice that a time window object is describing the working hours. Um, and now if we look at the time window object, and I believe it's in here somewhere, is a pair of timestamps in the form start end. And somewhere it does say um, that we can go ahead and use either um, absolute time, or we can go ahead and use uh, relative values. So we could use absolute values, which are real timestamps. Uh, it's not super clear to me what this is supposed to be in other than perhaps Unix time. Um, so I would imagine that what you could do is you could use Unix time as long as you're using um, the seconds, because these are seconds. However, you can also just use relative values. Uh, and so that's what I'm gonna go ahead and do in our example. But you could use, use Unix time. You just need to be careful that you're getting seconds and not, not milliseconds. So one of the first things that we need to do is we actually need to associate a service duration with each of our jobs. So in order to do this, I'm gonna go ahead and convert these essentially to uh, dictionary objects where we have a location followed by a service time. And our service time has to be in seconds, but we can go ahead and just sort of map that out. So I'll do one times 60 times 60, for instance, for an hour job. And I've, I've already done uh, some of these off screen. So in order to save time, I'm just gonna go ahead and copy it over. And so you can see that our jobs are mostly one hour in duration, but we have one job that is gonna take uh, six, six hours. We have another job that's gonna take only half an hour and we have a quick check-in that's only gonna take 15 minutes. 
So with all of that done, then we can go ahead and change our capacity on the vehicles to be a time window. And I'm gonna make this an eight hour shift. So we start at zero again, we're gonna use the relative time and we'll do eight times 60 times 60 for an eight hour shift. And that will apply to both vehicles. And then from there, of course, we need to pass this information into um, the actual job. So um, we can still keep index to be uh, index. However, um, we want to go ahead and do star star chords, um, and that will set the location and the service. The star star will essentially expand the dictionary and use each of the variables and and use them as if we had, had assigned them uh, just like we would in, in the function there. So this is really great if you need to add a lot of information and you don't wanna repeat uh, the variables, you can just go ahead and make sure that your variable names line up with what is required by the constructor and then just do the star star and that's a, that's a nice way to just convert dictionaries into objects essentially. So with that done, we can go ahead and run it and we receive an error which is cannot convert string to float service. Ah, so the issue was actually with uh, folium here. My apologies. We can go ahead and remove the four chord and chords there. Um, we can go ahead and add the icons in in a second and I'll show you how we're gonna do that. Um, but so you can see that we actually have uh, a slightly different routing now. Uh, this one is only taking three jobs and then this one is taking five jobs just based on one of the jobs that the orange uh, vehicle is taking being very long. Um, so we can go ahead and actually add some icons in here. And once again, I'm just gonna move over some code cause I, I wanna keep this video focused on open route service, not folium, but essentially what we're doing here is we're stepping through. So within the route, uh, it consists of a number of steps. Some of these are start, some of them are end, some of them are job. Um, so we can go ahead and filter only for the ones that are job because we've already uh, put our start location on the map. Um, so if not job, we continue. Otherwise, we add a folium marker uh, with a job and we're going to go ahead and do a pop up with an arrival time. So because we put timestamps in here, we can actually see when the vehicle is actually going to arrive there. Um, of course, it's in seconds. So we're going to grab, uh, we're going to divide it by 60 and floor it. Uh, 60 times 60 to get the hours, then we can uh, get the remainder of that and divide it by 60 to get the minutes. Um, and then we can go ahead and add a icon that is gonna be the same color as the vehicle so we can easily discern which vehicles are at which locations. So if we go ahead and do that now, math is not defined because we have to import it. So with math imported, we can go ahead and see here. So we can see that if we click on these, so it arrives there at three minutes, that's gonna be the first one, gets to this place at 21 minutes, so we could tell that was the short job. And then here, we get there at six, six hours and 23 minutes, so we could tell that was the really lengthy job. And we can see that, you know, this one's gonna arrive at probably its last, last place there by three hours, 45 minutes. So even though the green car is gonna do, do five places, it seems like a bit of a short shift because I'm pretty sure this is only an, an hour. So that pretty much uh, wraps up what I wanted to cover in terms of vehicle route optimization. Uh, there's more customization and a ton of customization that you can do uh, with open route service with uh, this API. But I think that covers you know, a, a simple example as well as a more complex example to, to get you started, um, as well as you know, definitely feel free to use the Vroom API reference here to customize uh, these examples to meet your needs. I will of course have the uh, code uh, down in the description below. So all the code is available on my website, syntaxbytutorials.com. Um, and hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully that was helpful. If it was, definitely toss a like on the video. Subscribe if you're interested in seeing more content like this. Uh, hopefully I'll have a video coming out on Folium soon as well. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.